Yo, 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 yo. This is the HAC School Podcast. I'm Brian. This is a short episode. And this episode is a Q&A episode, actually from a homeowner. I don't do many of these, but I may do some more. I get a lot of the same types of questions from homeowners. A lot of them have to do with humidity. I think that's probably the thing I talk about the most. Well, probably the thing I talk about the most, period. But then it's also the thing I talk about that most applies to a pain that is felt by homeowners. So yeah, we're going to answer the question. The question comes from Tim. So we'll hear from Tim right after we hear from our great sponsors. Fieldpiece at fieldpiece.com. Carrier at carrier.com. I'm a fan of UEI combustion analyzers. And a big reason I'm a fan is because of their overall low cost of operation, their lifetime cost of operation. Now you can keep your UEI combustion analyzers at their best with the UEI Service Plus Guarantee. Book your annual recertification online at ueitest.com slash service, and here's what you get. Free shipping both ways, a warranty extension for one more year, up to 10 years max, and same day return shipping the day they receive your analyzer. Guaranteed. So don't miss out. Get the full scoop at hvecrschool.com slash UEI service. UEI service plus. More than a promise, it's your performance guaranteed. Refrigeration Technologies at Refrigetech.com. Hi, my name is Tim Perkis. I'm actually a consumer, not an HVAC professional. I've had an ongoing problem with my carrier heat pump. It cools, but it won't properly dehumidify. Typically in the summer, when it's in the 90s, I'll have the temperature set to 74. It'll reach 74, but the humidity is up in the 80, 90% range. I've had at least 10 visits from three different HVAC companies. They're puzzled. They can't figure out what's wrong. They added just a slight amount of Freon, but they said it really didn't need it. They've checked. Since it's mounted in the attic, they thought it might be pulling air in from the attic into the return. They looked at that. They plugged a few holes, but there wasn't much to it. So they sort of thrown their hands up and said, we don't know what's wrong with it. This is three different companies. The only other thing that's ever happened with it is they did change out the evaporator coil at one time. So I'm at a loss. What could it be? I'm not sure if you guys can help me. Thanks a lot. All right, Tim. So what you're facing to distill it, and there's a lot of information here I don't know, but I'm going to go on what I do know. I don't know if this was a change out or if this is a new house. I'm going to assume it's a change out. You said a couple things. So you said it's a heat pump. So I'm going to focus there. You said that the air handler's in the attic. And you said that it's more of a problem when it's really hot outside, which is a little bit more on the concerning side. So it doesn't seem as much like it's a sizing issue. Well, it could be, but it doesn't seem like that based on what you're saying here. Usually systems that are sized improperly, you're going to have more of a problem during edge seasons. And if you're having a problem with humidity during the very hottest times of the year. It doesn't eliminate sizing, but it makes it less likely. But anyway, let's talk through a couple things that you need to do in this case. And I can almost assure you that the other companies, I shouldn't say I can assure you, but often they skip this step because everybody just focuses on a couple things. They focus on air temperature split. They focus on pressures of the system. When you said they added a little charge and it didn't seem to help much, they said it wasn't needed, I think is what you said. That's funny. It's either needed or it isn't. And adding a little bit's not going to help anything. So a couple things. First thing would be they need to just do a measure quick report at this point. I mean, honestly, a measure quick contractor going in, connecting the probes and just looking at the actual delivered capacity is going to be one of the first things you need to do. And based on the incoming air conditions, it's going to give you a pretty good sense of whether or not you're removing latent the way you're supposed to. So you have sensible BTUs, which are changing temperature. You have latent BTUs, which is removing moisture. And you want to make sure that you've got a good solid latent removing or moisture removing capacity, which leads to a low sensible heat ratio. So at really high relative humidities, you should be seeing sensible heat ratios that are easily below 0.7 for a system that's set up properly. The next thing is going to be system airflow. So if the system airflow is not set up right, that's a really common cause of humidity issues, both the dehumidification settings if you have them, but also if you're in a humid climate, which it sounds like you are, setting your airflow to 350 CFM per ton in a humid climate is going to be typical. I understand there's going to be folks out there who are like, oh, you got to know the design. Look at the manual S and the manual J and correct. Yes. But again, these are service companies coming in and let's not get ridiculous here. But we do need to make sure that the airflow is correct. And it's in that 350 CFM per ton range. And that if it has dehumidification controls, it's set up properly. 
to wire it up properly. If it's a two-stage piece of equipment, make sure that it's staging down, staging up. So measure quick report, confirm airflow, make sure it's staging down, staging up. Since this is a big problem at that point, in order to make sure that you're solving it, I would also do a full duct leakage test, like not a visual, but like an actual duct leakage test with a duct blaster or similar duct leakage tester to confirm that your ducts are not overly leaky and to try to find the location. Again, that's after you've done a full visual inspection of everything you can get to to make sure there's nothing wide open. After that, doing a blower door test, confirming that your house isn't excessively leaky, looking at things like dryer vents venting inside the structure, bath fans venting inside the structure, bath fans running all the time. Make sure the bath fans are running when they need to run and not all the time. Make sure kitchen exhaust is running when it needs to and not all the time. Things like whole house fans are a no-no. Things like powered ventilation when you have a vented attic. So solar power fans is a no-no. It can cause pressure imbalances. This is stuff that I've talked about a lot, but you really have to systematically go through the entire house. And then even things like mad air that Jenry Garcia talks about is another factor Jenry Garcia wasn't the first one, but it has been talking about it a lot lately. It's originally John Tooley and others who started talking about that. But basically, pressure imbalances inside the structure that can drive moisture in. You really want to look at source control, and that's the main thing. If you're saying 80 to 90% range, sure, the AC contractor needs to confirm that the system is not just cooling, but it's also actually removing moisture. And like I mentioned before, you can even do that with things like measuring condensate. You can confirm how well it's dehumidifying just through that. There's a lot of variables there. But the contractor needs to do all those things first, and then you look at your duct leakage, then you look at your structure leakage. And those are tests that building science professionals or a building science-minded HVAC contractor can do pretty easily. You just have to find companies that do that kind of thing and don't just swap boxes. The vast majority of contractors in the U.S. market just swap boxes because, generally speaking, that's all that people really want, honestly. And in most homes, it's not like major problems. There are issues in almost every home. But in your home, not being able to maintain a reasonable humidity, saying 80 to 90 percent is crazy. And I would also confirm that whatever you're using to measure that is truly correct, because that's very, very high. Like, I'm surprised you don't have mushrooms growing inside your home at this point. Maybe you do. And if you do, that's a bigger issue. But always start with confirm the equipment's doing what it's supposed to do, which means confirming airflow and doing something like a measure quick report. You can do similar things like with field piece or using other apps like the Psychro app, I think is what it's called, or Munters. Munters app, you can do it manually if you want, but nowadays, MeasureQuick is just the easiest way to do that. So that way you can confirm the equipment's doing, again, what it's supposed to do, airflow is where it's supposed to be, and then from there, it's all ductwork and envelope, the actual house itself, and then general source control, like the behaviors inside of the home itself. Those are the things you have to consider, and I've written a lot about all this. We've got a lot of content on that. The main thing for a consumer, though, is just recognize if you've got a contractor who doesn't know this stuff and doesn't value this stuff, you're just going to need to find a contractor who does. A regular HVAC contractor just doesn't think along these lines. They don't run into these problems that often. Usually, they just put a new system in, and it works okay, and nobody complains, and they move on. When you get into these bigger issues, you really want to find somebody who's going to be able to deal with it. And of course, we need to know where you are to give you that advice. That's something we're going to be working on as a locator for contractors who are really problem-solving contractors who can deal with issues. But recognize it's going to cost you money to do that. And I'm sorry about that. It's kind of a bummer, but it does cost more to have contractors who are going to take time, go through everything, be detailed, do the testing, do the reports. And so you're going to have to pay for that. It's not going to be a shortcut. But you illustrate a really common thing. Three companies can't figure it out. Yeah, because all three are probably doing exactly the same thing. Just going up, looking at the equipment, hooking up gauges, taking an air temperature split and saying, she's working, but something is going on in your home that's not normal. Whether it's the equipment, whether it's ductwork, or whether it's the envelope, or whether it's your behavior, or whether it's a combination of all four, you don't know until you test. So I know that's annoying, but that is the answer to the question. All right. Thanks for asking. Anybody who wants to ask questions, just go to speakpipe.com slash HVAC school. That's speakpipe.com slash HVAC school. And I will be happy to answer them, maybe. Much appreciated. Talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast. (laughs) 